Super. Okay, so I'll start now. Um, uh, thanks very much for having me, first of all. Um, I'm Lucien. I represent um, a company called Sage, and I'm also a member of OASP. Uh, and I'm going to be presenting a uh, not yet uh, um, existing, uh, hopefully soon, OASP project focused on security champions and how to enhance the maturity of security champions and how to manage security champions uh, all together. Um, so as I said, I, I, I work for, for Sage in application security. I used to be uh, an OWASP chapter leader uh, in 2014, 2015. So I've been in AppSec for a while, been doing security for a pretty long time. And I am supporting the OWASP uh, London chapter. I also, from time to time, um, uh, well, from, well from, I, I will, I, I'll try weekly, I try weekly to write a security newsletter, um, which I'm, uh, I'm sharing with uh, a good amount of people. I think I have about 500 people now that receive it and, and read it on a regular basis. If you're interested, it's uh, published on a weekly basis on my website, securitystack.co. Um, so today I wanted to, to talk to, to all of you about security champions. Now security champions have been uh, discussed for a long time now. Uh, many companies uh, have tried and failed to implement champions. Many companies have tried and succeeded to implement champions in a way or another. Obviously, uh, it, it really, the, the, the truth is in the eye of the beholder. So uh, some people might think it was successful. Some people might think it wasn't. So it really depends who you're going to ask. Um, uh, but nonetheless, security champions have been uh, around for a while. And um, even if you think about OWASP, uh, OWASP was, was set up by, uh, by developers. Uh, so in a, in a way, it was set up by, by developers interested in security, so by security champions. They weren't necessarily uh, people that were dedicated fully to security. Uh, eventually, they become, they, they become that, but initially, uh, I'm sure they were doing other things and they were maybe just regular developers. Uh, but nowadays, I guess you wouldn't necessarily call a dev a full stack dev without, without security. So if you, if, you, if you hear any developer say that they're not interested in security, um, well, maybe they're not, not interested in, in dedicating all of their time, which is another thing, but not interested at all. Uh, we, it, it, we wouldn't want to hear anything like that. I think we, we can all agree now in 2020 that, that security is, is, is mandatory on, on, uh, on the developers, um, uh, on any developer roadmap. Um, uh, and when I say developer, by the way, I include testers as well. So I guess developers and testers are security champions. I found I found these, um, and, and these are all over the place. Um, many, many companies are recommending, many organizations are recommending security champions. They think it's a good idea. They're, they're embedded, this idea is embedded in, in many maturity models. Uh, obviously, OWASP SAM is one of them, BSIM is another. Um, and there are a few others which, which mention security champions, uh, as you're going to see. I just want on this slide to say that uh, the, the particular poster in the middle, uh, this was posted uh, with one of my previous employers um, in, a, in, a, in the toilets and, and all around the office. And there were a few others um, uh, as well, not, not just this one. But I have to say that uh, they, were, they were pretty successful at the time. And, and many people uh, turned, uh, turned to security to ask, you know, um, how, what, what do you guys do on an everyday basis? Could, could you uh, teach us? Uh, how could we become closer to or come closer to what security is doing and, and learn a, bit of, a little bit more about, about security? Um, so uh, if anyone asks, uh, how, did we, how, how can you establish champions? There are various ways. I guess just I'll briefly mention uh, that posters is, is a good way to advertise for security still if you have an office. Now, I guess today most offices will be virtual. So you want to advertise on, on a company portal or wherever, wh wherever you know that, that uh, developers and testers and in general, uh, any other uh, IT professional uh, that is interested in security uh, could be applying to become a security champion. Uh, obviously, you can speak to... Um, 
you can refer to the various uh, areas that a uh, developer or a development team is representing either product or a service uh, if they work for for product development or for it um, uh, you can obviously speak to the leadership it's very important to get buy-in from leadership so all of these things do cost a little bit of money so it's important that 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 you get buy-in from leadership um, in general is still is still difficult. I'm I'm still having discussions with a few people uh, in 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 the security sector on how to establish security champions where where there aren't any. Um, and uh, I guess it's just reaching out and and telling people about what security is doing, uh, or what security is planning to do, and what they need help with. Uh, but nonetheless, this is just to say, uh, this slide is to say that Security Champions has been has been with us for a while. It's clearly a good idea. And this talk is about how to manage uh, this idea, how to maintain it. Um, so as I said, Champions are mentioned in many places. There is an OAS project as well called OAS Security Champions Playbook, where you can inspire from. Uh, and and, and uh, it will teach you on on how to establish uh, security champions, how to manage them uh, going forward, what are, what are the main things that, that matter in a security champions program, uh, these kind of things. Um, or as Sam, as I, as I said, mentioned security champions uh, and recommend security champions at various levels of maturity. Now there is a slide on that. Um, BSIM 10 uh, also mentioned security champions. Um, safe code guide, uh, there is a whole section on security champions and why that's a good idea. Also, BSIM, just to say BSIM also calls security champions, they, they call them uh, security satellites, which it might not be such a, such a great idea. Um, uh, but, but nonetheless, uh, it's, it's up to us on how we, how we decide to call uh, these people that, that help the security team scale. Um, I think security champions is, is a good idea. Now, with this idea, I've seen, I've seen in, in a few companies uh, uh, the, the concept of champions being um, adopted in other, other areas as well. So with GDPR two years ago, there were privacy champions. Um, there's, there, there are also, there's also a concept of quality champions, uh, legal champions. I've, I'm, 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 I've seen the concept uh, adopted in, in other areas, uh, as I was saying. NIST is mentioning champions, SANS, of course, Mozilla, um, and there are a number of companies that deal with security uh, and, and security tools, uh, such as Veracode and Checkmarks and a few others. Um, they, uh, they have uh, pretty strong suggestions on, on what to do about security champions and how to train them, especially. Uh, so I don't know if you know, but uh, uh, Checkmarks, for example, I think, uh, Code bashing is, uh, they bought code bashing, uh, which was uh, uh, considered to be pretty good in, in, uh, in application security training. There are others such as Secure Code Warrior. So anyway, if anyone is interested, I'm, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, but I do recognize, I think I can, uh, together with, with the application security team that I lead, I think we can recognize uh, good training. And we've, we've, we've seen examples of, of good training. Obviously OWASP is, as usual, a, a very good source of, of training for developers. Um, uh, watch the, uh, have a look at the previous OWASP uh, presentation on champions as well. It deals with the playbook that's mentioned at the beginning of the slide. Uh, that's, that's important. It delves into the security champion topic uh, a little more um, uh, in, in, in kind of how to establish uh, security champions rather than what I'm going to go through in a, in a minute. Um, so why, why security champions? Um, and this has been captured by, as I was saying earlier, in various maturity models, uh, or some BSIM. So uh, here on this slide, you have uh, a, an extract from BSIM and security satellites. And this is actually one of the views uh, um, in, in my current company uh, for a, from a while ago. I think it's, it's two years old, this one. But nonetheless, um, uh, using Excel and not a fancy dashboard like the one we've seen in the previous talk, which by the way, I'm very interested in, uh, we, we have been um, uh, evaluating ourselves and also evaluating the areas which are impacted by security champions or where security champions, at least as a concept, are recommended. And this is strategy and metrics and training in, in BSIM. 
Uh, the next slide is on uh, OWASP open sum and and I'll detail uh, I'll detail it in there as well. Um, but nonetheless, uh, uh, there are a number of of maturity models which recommend security champions. Now, one thing that I've uh, I've uh, I've realized that is is kind of missing is. Uh, yes, you have them, but what do you do then? It, it is choosing the training, um, keeping track of that training, uh, keeping track of the activities that the champions are doing. Um, these are uh, these are things which aren't captured maybe very uh, very well yet, um, or at least they're they're left at the at the discretion of the reader on how exactly they will be implementing these things. Uh, nonetheless, I'll, I'll go into detail in a minute. Um, OASAM goes in, obviously as well into the champions uh, topic uh, at, at various maturity levels and I think it's in the governance section uh, where uh, uh, the, the question is have you identified the security champion is mentioned. Um, there are a, a number of things which are recommended uh, together with, with obviously identifying the champion is that they receive training, is, it, is the training customized? Uh, which, for example, if you ask me, I think this is already the next level because initially you could be training uh, every single champion on the same things, so for example, concepts of application security. But at a later stage, you might want to train .NET security champions in .NET security, PHP developers in PHP security. Uh, uh, there are some DevSecOps courses as well these days. Uh, maybe the architects are interested in in, in architecture uh, uh, secure architecture design. Um, so obviously, customized training I think uh, is is super important. Uh, but for for many organizations, I think this is already a, a second level of maturity. You train uh, everyone uh, in 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 security, and um, uh, these days, or at least that that's, that is everyone that is in the technology team at least in a way or another um, and uh, it's important that you capture the things that they care about and at least in the in the company I work for we took the approach where we don't necessarily tell them what training to go for we give them access to a whole library of training and they they are able to choose the training they want and that is relevant to them it's much easier to manage things this way um, and uh, and obviously you're giving uh, people the, the freedom to choose the training that is relevant. Um, periodic briefing briefings uh, on the security champions. So uh, I've seen in a few companies the concept of uh, meeting with uh, with security champions on a regular basis. Uh, in one of my previous companies, this was called security clinics, uh, and this was set up uh, by uh, one of my colleagues in Portugal. Um, and uh, it was very beneficial. It was per sprint. Uh, so you could meet with, with security champions and product management to, to talk about security user stories. Um, and obviously, you can involve security champions in external penetration testing. This is what OWASP uh, SAM recommends. Now, at a second maturity level, it's recommended that you have this concept of product champions which uh, promote specific security tools. Um, so it's important, I don't know, let's say in static code analysis, um, there might be a specific tool which is more appropriate for your technology. Let's say that is Ruby on Rails and then another technology which is more appropriate for, for .NET. Um, so it's important that you have champions which are specialized uh, in a way or another or become specialized in these tools. Um, so the, uh, and, and um, so, so there are lots of things that you can do with champions, lots of things, and and this is one. Uh, uh, this is what we've realized um, a while ago, I guess, in in Sage, is that there's there's many things that security champions can help with, and there are many areas of security that security champions are going to be going to be attracted by. Um, so, what? How do we keep track of all of these things? And, and the level three in, in OASP SAM uh, kind of hints to that. So it hints that you should develop some sort of platform to identify members of the software, of the Secure Software Center of Excellence. So how do you, how do you kind of keep track of these activities happening for security? Maybe you could even keep track of activities, uh, security activities of people that even uh, that aren't nominated as champions yet. So even better, that would help you identify because 
all of a sudden in this in this uh, platform that you've managed to put together you have an entry from uh, a developer that is not a champion saying i've done this for security uh, and i think it's i think it's useful and uh, you know i i want to i want people to know that i've done this um so th that is one one way to to um uh, to find out uh, who could be your your next champion so um uh, sorry on this on this slide what i didn't say is uh, obviously there was satish's presentation earlier and i think it's brilliant what he's done with the uh, with the open uh, with the awesome uh, dashboard i've seen um, other people try to put together dashboards but none looked as good as that the one that is on this slide specifically, I, I think it was put together by uh, someone in OWASP um, and uh, it can be found um, at the link uh, in, in, in my deck. Um, and I think it's, it's absolutely open and uh, it can be further developed. Uh, but obviously, if Satish's uh, dashboard is also available, um, we, can, we, can, we can all uh, uh, develop that forward it really, uh, further. It really, really looks good. Um, and potentially, what I'm going to show later in the slides uh, could be uh, could become part of that, or at least we could link it with that, or at least extract. Uh, I, I I remember at some point Satish mentioned AI, uh, or at least potentially extracting information from wherever it is stored into the dashboard, which would basically automate the completion of the dashboard. Uh, so you'll see what I mean in a what I mean in a second. Basically, extracting security champion statistics into your uh, maturity dashboard uh, automatically so you don't have to do it yourself um sorry to uh, interrupt you there for a second uh, lucien uh, yes. just a gentle reminder that we have 10 minutes left yes, including I'll questions be, yes i'll be very quick and about your previous slide there is a newer version of the quality criteria the one that you mentioned you thought was level two maturity i linked it on the on the chat section for everyone Super. okay Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, cool. On this slide, I just thought that this this might be interesting to a few people. Um, this is extracted from BSIM 10, uh, so it's the, it's um, BSIM is also a maturity model, and uh, it has been uh, they have been BSIM has been talking to a number of companies. I think in the last version of BSIM, it's 122 companies which were officially uh, part of the uh, BSIM maturity assessment. I just want to mention on this slide that, that there are um, 6,298 security champions uh, in these 122 companies. Uh, they correspond to half a million developers. Uh, and also they correspond to 1,500 people in the security team. So actually, as you can see, the, the, the percentage between uh, members of the security team and the security champions is not that big. It's uh, what is is twenty five percent, and then obviously there is a huge number of developers. It was interesting to to see this, um, and also uh, if you if you see on the left there is a, a level three maturity activity recommended by BSIM, which mentions reward progression to curriculum, uh, and as you can see, only three companies do this. So this is the this is the 2019 I think version of of, of BSIM the last one uh, from 122 companies only only three companies have been identified to reward uh, uh, security champions uh, progression through the curriculum so that's a very very small percentage and um, I also added this slide I thought it's it's useful for for a few people it's sometimes difficult to kind of put together. What do security champions do? So I'm not going to go into detail of this, uh, but there are a number of, of areas, as I was saying, where security champions can contribute. And you'll see what we've done with that. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the extract from BSIM 10, uh, referring to the reward progression through curriculum. Um, so as you can see here, it, it mentions that uh, progression uh, uh, through the security curriculum brings benefits uh, such as career advancement. And you'll see what I mean through that, but it, it doesn't really give much more. And I think it's important that we, that we uh, contribute to the, uh, to the improvement of, of the current maturity models uh, if, if uh, this is acknowledged by everyone to be a gap um, on, 
on more particularly how to how to reward uh, how to recognize and how to reward um, uh, people contributing to security um, so this is how we came up with the maturity categories for security champions it basically introduces 10 areas uh, so 10 areas of, of security where security champions can contribute um, it's the use of tools, contribution to bug bounties, if they have that training or not, contribution to events, their contribution to security operations and OSINT, contributions uh, to security reviews, penetration tests, assessments, contributions in research. So obviously we have developers uh, involved in this. So, uh, and, and, and this is also adding to the next point, development for security. Um, uh, there is a, a lot of need for research in security. And I think there's, there are many many security champions out there which can contribute to these two areas. Um, uh, contributing to reporting. And finally, uh, we think threat modeling is, is, is important. And we have this concept of uh, embedded uh, security architects uh, or embedded architects. Um, and they, in, in some cases in our company, they also take the role of, uh, of organizing uh, threat modeling sessions. And uh, again, this would be a way to reward uh, them as well. How do we plan to do this? So we, we are building an app we, for, for now. It's just an Excel uh, and the Excel is publicly available. Uh, the app will be available in about a month or two. Uh, we will open source it. Uh, effectively, you are, you are going to be able to log achievements um, uh, to mention the area of the, uh, of, of the, the area. So the, uh, of the, of, from these 10 areas, the area that you're contributing to as a security champion. And um, obviously the points that you believe you deserve, so the maturity level at which you are pitching, because uh, this is also uh, recommended to be linked into a belting program. So obviously as security champions progress with their maturity, they will move uh, in our, in our uh, belting program, at least from a white belt to a green belt and from green belt to a black belt. Um, and uh, obviously, this is done on a uh, on an annual basis. So each year, you will have to renew your belt. Um, but obviously, uh, you can perform one action more times. So uh, that will increase uh, your score, and that will go into a leaderboard. So as you can see on the bottom here, there is a leaderboard which which mentions uh, progress, and there are a number of points which you can't see because of this uh, window but number of points achieved and also the belt that was achieved. Um, this is the detail, so I'm not going to go uh, into it uh, uh, too much, but it explains basically the uh, maturity levels for each of these uh, 10 categories. So you can, uh, you can get uh, uh, one point for maturity, uh, maturity level one for use of tools because um, uh, supporting triggering and understanding a tool that is one maturity level but you are if, if you're able to implement debug perform maintenance that is uh, clearly uh, uh, more experience is required for that and obviously if you are able to participate in trials as a security champions and do analysis on on alternatives on on, on security tools then you are you will be considered to have achieved uh, maturity level three in this category um, and as I said, this is now still in Excel, but it's going to become an app. Uh, you, will, you are able to get points, to obtain points uh, for the belt calculation. So it will tell you uh, what belt you have achieved. Um, and, and obviously points add up on a yearly basis to your leaderboard calculation. Uh, so you can obviously encourage competition in your company between uh, security champions. There are a number of uh, reasons why I think we should do this. Um, so uh, many champions don't know how to contribute to security. We spend a lot of time explaining to individual people how to contribute to security. So I think this, uh, this maturity uh, categories project is going to help uh, answer some of those initial questions. Uh, it will diversify security knowledge because this is uh, recommending uh, more areas of security and not uh, specifically uh, looking at code and performing threat modeling um, and, and running security tools, which are the more regular 
uh, activities of, of developer security champions. Getting them recognized and rewarded, this is very important. Many of them have mentioned many things that they, they have done and we've lost track of those. And maybe we haven't rewarded people uh, properly. Uh, keep track of progress. So have an application that, that's, that's doing this. Um, so having everyone record their achievements and, and having points uh, behind, so an application with an API behind it that you can query from wherever you want. So as I was suggesting earlier, it can be queried from a dashboard and, uh, and, and this, this dashboard would be uh, displaying maturity information for your application security program in relation to champions in an automatic fashion. Um, sorry, Lucien, um, to stop you again. We have only yes. two minutes left and a couple of questions already. That's so fine. Everything else is on the slide, so I'm happy to take questions now. Okay. So the first question is from Kimberly, um, and she asks about what training you use for application security and security champions. She says it sounds like you have a library of training videos. Uh, where did you obtain that training, or did you develop it yourself? Um, there is training that we develop ourselves as well. So there are a number of um, so th th some some people of uh, some uh, of the colleagues in the application security team. Uh, they provide training themselves in in ZAP and in uh, in static code analysis. Um, we do provide uh, training using uh, a, a company called Synopsys. They uh, they provide CBT training for development security. Uh, we also use Secure Code Warrior for more interactive gamified security training. But obviously, I, I, I'm not, again, we're not affiliated, we just use them and uh, we think they're okay. Uh, obviously, they're okay for us. So you will have to, I think, uh, uh, obviously talk to them and, and decide for yourselves. But um, we've changed a few providers as well. So um, it, it's important that you look at the specifics of your team, what are their needs, and then see if the training fits or not. So it's important that you're, you're covering the right topic. So yes, we, we use Secure Code Warrior and Synopsys in, um, in my current company. Okay, we have a question from Nivi. You mentioned a product manager for a maturity level two that advocates what tools to use for scanning. How about managers who recommend secure frameworks, libraries, functions to be used for secure coding instead, as scanning would be more of a decision taken by the security team? Yeah, well, um, champions can can grow a lot. So I think uh, we have champions which uh, have been with us, uh, with the security team in discussions with uh, with various tool pr tools providers. And they've been involved in the POC, so they have a, a really good idea of of what that security tool does and if it's fit for purpose. But at the same time, I want to say that we use this concept in Sage called the security definition of done. So it, it uh, somewhat uh, relates to uh, the question, uh, which is it's recommending a, a number of things on, on specific security areas, such as security frameworks that you want to use. Um, if there are any libraries which are specifically recommended, I don't know, for input validation. If you work on Java, for example, uh, how, sh how should you approach Java cryptography? So there are a number of topics uh, which we consider important in our company, of course which we also in, in the solutions that we found for these for these problems we have added all of these into this concept of security definition of done which is managed by security champions so they add to it whenever they find a solution to something they they document it in the definition of done so that all other champions are, are aware of it so this would be my recommendation is to definition of done has has been with us for a long time as part of sprints and and development teams uh, why not have a security definition of done and, 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 and define it together with security champions? Thank you very much, Lucien. Sorry to interrupt you again. We are a minute behind and we have Thomas next. Thank you so much for, for your talk. It was really interesting and brought up some questions as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.